Good morning, everybody. June 23rd, 7.45 in the morning. <laughs> it's Wednesday. Been up a couple of hours now. Just one of those nights. Can't sleep. Ugh, I don't know. You know, it's I'm not tired. I mean, that's the thing that's always crazy about it. I get two, three hours sleep and I'm wide awake. Um, wanted to say thank you, everybody, for a great live stream yesterday. Um, you are just the greatest community. I, I, the interaction that takes place amongst everybody, uh, it's its just like a family reunion every two weeks with family you really like to hang with. And uh, I was thrilling yesterday uh, yesterday to see Sean Fidel get back um, on online, and he's heading home, I believe, today from the hospital so he can really just chill and, and, and get well. Um, I worry about everybody when any kind of health situation arises, um, but it's uh, it's just always interesting how how topics evolve within in, in these streams. Um, it can be what's your favorite restaurant where you live and that with the favorite kind of foods. What was your first concert? You know, and all that stuff. I mean, I love it. It's uh, it's just it's a real um, it's just a real insight into humanity um and um how people how people are and so i love it i i just absolutely love it um bunch of stuff to do today um had a had a fun interview actually last night after we finished the live stream with these guys the wise guys out of new jersey uh, we, we had a good time talking and um uh, i've got another one to do this afternoon and then tomorrow morning is when I'm going to do my uh, Zoom interview with Ron, the great Ron Carter. So I'm excited about that. Ron's really just a rem beyond being like one of the greatest musician bassists ever. He's just a cool guy. He's really great. So it'll be fun to see what we get we get into. Um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back today. Um, I, I keep thinking about him more and more. I really miss him because uh, Genesis is going to be heading out on on tour um, in Europe um, soon, and that's September, I believe. And uh, my my road buddy for all my time uh, with uh, Phil Collins has been uh, Daryl Sturmer. And we both talk, and we just kind of go, oh, "I'm gonna miss you, man," because I, I, he, you know, he's part of Genesis, and there's self-contained, so I don't have any thing to do with it. But uh, he and I, like, we would check into a hotel, and like, within two seconds of being in the hotel, one of us would call the other, go, "Law and Order's on channel 132 or something like that." We would both just sit and watch Law and Orders, and you know, we'd hit the streets and go and eat and hang. And he was. He was, uh, you know, my road hang. And so I, I, I miss him. And so, so I was just thinking about, um, I've posted a number of, of Daryl's things in, in, the, uh, in the past, and I thought I'd visit uh, the last project we did together. Uh, we did this in 2007 and did this at his um, home studio uh, back in Milwaukee. And on this, on this one, I used my Red Sparkle um, Dingwall was the instrument of choice for this album. That's what I, because that's the one I brought back. <laughs> it's like so, the choice was made. Um, but this album is called Go. And uh, it's, uh, first time I saw the title, I went, I, 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 didn't somebody use that? And I went, oh no, Gabriel, it was so. <laughs> and this is Go. And um, this is Daryl's, God, I think he's done about 10 solo albums. I mean, he's, he's, he's been very prolific. And his career, I mean, working with Gino Vanelli and Jean-Luc Ponty and um, his own groups uh, in Milwaukee and now he, with the Daryl Sturmer Band. Um, in fact, I just talked to him the other day and he's down in Mexico doing a, a thing he does every year. There's a, um, a resort down there, I believe, and they invite him down to do clinics, you know, perform for them and... and do Q's and Q and A's and stuff, and then and give him a nice vacation, which is great. You know, I'm, I'm, he sounded like he was chilled and relaxed and enjoying himself with that. So that's really great. Um, so, but I thought I would just uh, 
you know, play a, a couple of the songs that we did on uh, his Go album. And uh, his, uh, his facility on guitar is just really stunning. Um, I remember, like, I would talk to Steve Lukather about what I was doing. I'd say, I'm going to go with, be doing with Daryl. And go, oh, man, give Daryl my best. He's just the best guitar, man. He's, like, unbelievable. I mean, within the guitar community, Daryl has, like, just so many um, uber fans. Um, and, but you know, it's like it's that I said it before on one of the earlier ones. I said it's always weird. You know, he's not one of those guys that when they do like the top 10 guys, top 20, whatever, his name generally it does not pop up. He's not on the, on the radar. It's the same with like all those stupid bass lists where you just kind of see not, it's not stupid because of the guys that are there, but it's just, it's like kind of the same bunch of guys. And every time I look at any of these lists, I just go, God, there's guys I know that so good and nobody has any idea who the hell they are you know they never get mentioned and it's just the way it is you know it's more of a popularity contest i guess um but uh daryl's musicianship his writing and his his playing is is really quite stunning so um let me just play a couple of tunes from him uh, from this album that we did and this was really fun. I mean, from, from my standpoint, this was all, I, I overdubbed bass on all these tracks that I'm doing. Um, he had, pro, he'd done, uh, Daryl had done all the programming. Um, uh, John Calarco, who's Daryl's drummer back in Milwaukee, did all the drumming on this one, where Mark Torrell had done the two previous albums. Uh, but John's been working with him. And uh, Costia is playing keyboards with him who's just a fabulous, God, fabulous keyboard player. And so he played keyboards. Daryl did guitar keyboards and programming on this. And then, then Daryl turned into the Renaissance man, and he produced it and mixed it, engineered, <laughs> did everything. Um, and, uh, and it was fun. Just, I just stayed in his house with him in the guest room, and we would just go in the room uh, in his studio and work and then hang out, go out, eat, and... Just, uh, just be silly together. I, I love Daryl's family, so it was really great to be with everybody. And um, so let's play some music. Okay, so this is this is Heavy Heart. Check this one out.
The thing I love about Daryl's playing is he can play just these beautiful, simple lines, but he can shred with the best of them. I mean, just the, the breadth of his taste uh, is, is really, really quite special. Um, when we'd be out with Phil, he could just do these beautiful little lyrical parts and then all of a sudden step up and just completely, you know, rip your head off with a, some shredding. And I love songs like that. I mean, it kind of starts off, you got kind of a Robert Palmer vibe and vibe. And then um, uh, it's, it's just the, these flavors uh, that, that come through. Um, I could almost hear like Tom Petty doing that song vocally. It's uh, really fascinating stuff to me. I really love it. He's just such a great musician. This is a song called, the whole album's great. And there's a, a few tracks on here that um, Eric Hervé plays bass on, who plays uh, bass normally in, in Daryl's band, who's a wonderful bassist too. Uh, I'm just showing the tracks that I worked on, just because this is about me. But uh, Eric's, if you listen to the album, he's, he's just a great player too. Uh, but here's another one that I did with Daryl called Breaking Point. Shot the monkey kind of up. So just a simple guitar line.
the thing that's great is he always comes up with really great melodic lines. It's not just plain guitar. It's coming up with compositions that uh, you could hear somebody singing. You could hear, I mean, it's there's a lyrical content to it. Uh, in the same way that <clears throat> had, when I did Spectrum with Billy Cobham, I mean, all the songs really had were based in really good melody. I mean, there was monstrous blowing involved, but it was set up with a piece of legitimate music and not just sort of a wank fist to uh, get you to the uh, to the blowing. And Daryl really creates some some really beautiful melodic structure on these um, songs. So it's it's always fun to do. But again, you know, the thing starts off. It's a pretty simple line from the guitar, and then. Once he really digs in, then it gets into the, um, you know, to that shred mode, and then it comes right back out at the end and just gives you this more simple, um, structured, uh, melodic line. So, and I'm, I'm going to miss him. I wish, wish there was an opportunity to, to play again. I, I hope, hope something gets us back together down the line where we can play. We both talk about it. Um, We'll see what happens. The future's, future is as is, is vague as uh, uh, it's just like looking through kind of oil cloth. You just don't know what's on the other side. You can kind of get some vague ideas, but not really sure. Here's a, well, let's see if this gets us any closer to the answer of life. This is called Green Light. <laughs> Shuffle. I love playing a groove like this. Just bounce. different flavor all of a sudden.
Yeah. Yeah. Just, it's, it, it's interesting. I mean, Daryl has a kind of thematic way of soloing. He doesn't repeat his solos, but he has a certain, there's a thing about the way he plays intervals and stuff in his solos that anytime I hear a solo that he plays, I, I, if I, even if I don't know it's him, his signature is so um, deep that I, that I go, well, it's Daryl. And then it always is. Um, he just has this unique way of structuring what he does. And uh, uh, it's, it's really, it's, it's a Daryl Sturmer thing. So I'll do one more song. This one's called Striker. This is really another great one here. God, I loved working on this. The, the, uh, the only difference on this one was the first albums that I did with him. We did Ensemble. And then this one, um, he had been uh, programming at home and had all, most of the stuff finished up. And then I came in and did the bass parts on it. But I was sitting there with Daryl. We were talking out the parts and, you know, giving, you know, guidance and direction on it. So it was really fun interacting that way. Uh, but this was the only one that we did that was not cut as a band. So here we go, Striker.
that's the fun for me of what I get to do. God, you know, to have gone from Judith Owen to that in immediate family and uh, Warren Zevon. Yeah, I, I just, I love variety. And uh, it's, uh, it's just, I feel so fortunate that this is what I get to do play with gifted musicians like this. It's just unbelievable. I just noticed, oh, I don't know if I showed you this. There's a really wonderful artist um, named Cindy Wade, and she made me a, uh, she does these for a bunch of people. It's really great. Let me get this one here. See if you can see it. She made me a, a cup. It's hard to see. This is really great. But as a gift from the wonderful Eileen Shapiro, she made me this mug. And there's Marcello and Rosano on the mug. I mean, her work is just beautiful. I'm not going to use it as a mug. I'm going to just sit here and enjoy it, uh, just gay, look at it every day. But really a fine, fine artist. I thank you, Cindy, for all the work you do. It's just really beautiful she's her, she's got a website where she does all this stuff and it's really great uh cindywade.com go check it out she's got all kinds of really great stuff really fine artist okay so that's daryl sturmer herr sturmer um who's still down in mexico doing his thing he'll be back soon and then he'll be heading off to uh europe uh to uh get started with genesis and then they'll do their East Coast run here in the States. Um, we're all hopeful that everything will go really smooth with it. Um, it's going to be a real litmus test when you start seeing more and more of these big concerts like this, how um, people are going to act, respond, how healthy it's going to stay and all that. But at some point it has to get started. And um, so they're, they're, they're sneaking out there. We've got you know more stuff being put together. I just got all of my music for the Peter Asher, Kate Taylor, Albert Lee run. I'm going to download everything and start studying and um, see how how I do with all of that. Um, so lots of things, lots of things to do, lots lots of ways to be busy. I've got a couple of orders to fill. Got to go to the post office and take care of that. So. Um, Again, thank you guys and gals yesterday for a really wonderful live stream. It's always just such a fun hang with you. I can't, it's hard to explain. It's hard to even imagine that this is what it would have evolved into a year, almost a year ago. But uh, I'm forever grateful for it. And again, thank you so much, all you first responder, frontliner, people that are out there working every day. I, I see reports every day of some areas backsliding because of new variants and your job is not done. And uh, so I thank you so much for what you do. Um, so I'm going to get going, take care of my day. It's uh, 8.20 now and um, I've got lots to get started doing. So have a wonderful day and um, I'll be back tomorrow. And then Saturday I'll see, I guess, the schedules filling up for Saturday for the one-on-one -on -one FaceTime and Skypes. Um, so that I'm looking forward to that. That's always a real fun part of the month for me just to have really direct you know, contact uh, and talk about whatever anybody wants to talk about. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty neat thing. So uh, till then, you take good care. I'll be back tomorrow. Like as I always say, and the, um, the proverbial gum on your shoe, you know, you think you wiped it off outside and you go in and there I am in your carpeting. So, <laughs> no getting rid of me. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.